Welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be looking at the results of my amateur experiment to see what effects ethanol blended fuel might have on metal, plastic and rubber components that you'd potentially find in your car's fuel system, whether it's uh, vintage, classic or modern. The materials we're looking at are as follows. Polypropylene, which is typically used in early direct injection high pressure fuel pumps and carburetor floats from the 70s to the 90s. Silicon hose, rarely used as fuel line but it says it's compatible for it. Rubber fuel hose, apparently suitable for 5% ethanol. Uh, our various metals are aluminium, copper, brass, stainless steel, zinc plated mild steel, uh, all the things you might find in carburetors and fuel tanks over the years. For the first test, we're just going to crudely submerge each item in 150 millilitres of Shell V power, which is from a recently tested batch shown to be ethanol free, and 150 millilitres of Jets E10, which has again been tested recently and found to contain 6% ethanol. These will be left in airtight jars for a month, and I'll lightly shake them a couple of times a week to simulate a car's motion and perhaps fuel flow, albeit not under any form of pressure. Depending on the results and if the video proves popular, I could also retest them uh, open to the atmosphere or under some simulated fuel pressure. You'll notice I have a couple of other fuel samples here in the larger jars, and although I'm just looking to compare an ethanol blend with V-Power, I thought it might be interesting to see if the other Supreme and Super Unloaded brands do a better or worse job cleaning some used spark plugs and rusty metal I'm putting in these jars. If you've been following this channel's fuel testing series, you might remember that we found the clarity or shade of the yellow has no actual bearing on the ethanol content or octane rating. This Golf Endurance 97 is practically clear with perhaps a slight yellow hue to it when up to the light. The SO Synergy Supreme 99 is the colour of a pale ale, whereas the Shell V Power is more like the bladder of a dehydrated person. Jet, the only petrol here with ethanol in it, is somewhere in between. As for the cleaning properties, I'm keeping them separate from the component test as I didn't want the rust and grime to affect the results of what ethanol might do by itself. We're also only going to observe the V-Power and the 6% uh, E10 results as I've already used 150ml of each petrol in the smaller jars. I've got a spark plug from a car in fairly good tune but it had a small oil leak so there's some sludge in the threads and there's a plug with a bit more uh, like white calcification going into the V-Power. This is basically from driving the car when it was overheating. And since Shell pride themselves for the V-Power's additive package, uh, we'll see how that fares with this uh, superheated hardened carbon. These metal brackets also had some rocker cover oil leak uh, sort of get onto them. They're pretty rusty as well, as are the two bolts here next to them. I did try to get some proper engine sludge by soaking some old Torx bits in the bottom of uh, some thick engine oil that hadn't been changed for nearly 40,000 miles. As sludgy as it was, it sadly wouldn't stick to the bits even when I left them in the hot sun all day. I did find an evenly rusted junior hacksaw blade, so I'll plop that in the jars too, then we can see if there's any changes specific to rust. So you join me one month later. First off, the polypropylene is visibly identical, but oddly the ethanol one feels unchanged, but the V-Power one is actually much softer and feels more malleable. From the outset, this plastic is flexible, but it felt more brittle before. The V-Power one is springy, uh, yet the E10 sample is the one that's the same as before. The fuel hose is perhaps more relevant to fuel testing. There's nothing immediately obvious in difference between the two. There was a tiny bit of sediment on my thumb, but I don't think that's from the hose degrading, but where I've made a rougher cut along it than I did with the other one. Nothing's coming off either of them. Remembering this hose is supposedly E5 compatible, and this E10 is really E6. Uh, take a mental note of the shiny inside surface of the hose, as when it does break down you'll see a more matte looking finish here, and it's the first sign of it degrading, as we may see that after the second experiment that I'll explain in a bit. The silicon hose looks a little more bleached in the ethanol blend and it doesn't feel quite the same as the other. It's still quite shiny and doesn't look like there's any uh, degradation of material. Like the made for purpose fuel hose, we'll make a note of the inside surfaces too. 
The metal components are mostly unchanged. The zinc plate is fine. Uh, the brass hooks maybe have a slightest change in colour as we also see with the stainless steel. It has a very slight tint but I'd say it's a little inconclusive. Now the biggest difference with the metal is uh, with the copper sample. This is a brand new sump plug washer and the one soaked in ethanol blend has darkened. This makes sense as patination fluid used to age copper to make it look uh, more antique contains potassium sulphide and cheaper fuels contain more sulphur than V-Power which has the lowest sulphur content of all petrols. A trace amount compared to the legal minimum of 0.3%. Of course this isn't a test of the effects of sulphur but ethanol and yes alcohol too may have an effect on copper as I remember reading a study on high alcohol consumption leading to a uh, copper and zinc deficiency in the body, but I appreciate that's uh, speculative when it comes to this test. The aluminium is so far unchanged also. Both of the fuels have darkened. If we compare it to the larger volume in these other jars, I'm guessing most of this is fragments from the fuel hose. Similarly with the uh, rust and gunk test, there's a little in the way of difference, although the Golf Performance had made a good job of shining up the uh, rusty saw blade. I don't think these petrols are dissolving rust, but rather removing the bluing of the blade to leave a shiny unrusted surface. The V-Power hasn't moved, removed as much as the bluing from the blade, but it has removed all of the oily gunk from this bracket, leaving just the rust. The E10 has also removed a lot of the gunk too, leaving perhaps a small amount of residue in comparison, and has left the saw blade in a similar way. The spark plugs aren't looking much healthier yet, only removing the looser grime from the threads, but the electrodes aren't looking much better as I can tell. You can see the thicker hardened carbon on the V-Power plug, which will give another chance after the second part of this test. Before that, I noticed that the seal on one of these lids is swollen and then is lifting away. It's on the ethanol blend, but the jars are actually different types, so I'm going to swap the lids over from this uh, golf sample, and the labels too, obviously. Uh, and if the seal lifts on that one as well, then we know something's up. For the second part of the test, I'm adding water to the samples at 1% of the volume. This is because although ethanol can cause some problems by itself, most of the detrimental effects it has to cars is the fact that it's hydrophilic and will draw water from condensation through your fuel system and that can cause oxidisation. This tiny drop of water should simulate the condensation you can get inside a fuel tank in more humid climates and I'm going to let it sit for 6 weeks this time and mix it up just once a week. 1% of the water should stay suspended in the ethanol blended fuel as in like the content tests I do with 30% water to draw out the alcohol, we still want the components soaking in the petrol itself and not the water sat at the bottom. Help deal with the effects of high inflation and economic recession by signing up to Nexo. Nexo is an alternative banking platform who offer a debit card that pays 2% cash back on all purchases with no fees. You can buy, sell, borrow and earn both fiat and cryptocurrencies as well as get $25 worth of Bitcoin using the link in the description below. Now back to the video. So six weeks later, let's see if we've got some more apparent differences between the fuels. We'll start with the more obvious in the last test which is the copper. This has aged considerably more in the ethanol blended fuel than it did with the V-Power. As I mentioned before, this may be down to the sulphur content uh, rather than its uh, alcohol. However, if you're running carbureted cars and bikes, many of which have copper banjo bolts, washers and even floats, use V-Power over the cheaper fuels. Next, we'll take a look at the fuel hose. Remember the glossy inner surface we saw earlier? Well, the ethanol blend is showing a lot of that glaze now gone and there's a large matte patch covering most of the inside of the pipe. This has been purely the result of being submerged in petrol with a trace of water. There's been nothing to abrade it since I last put it in the jar. The V-Power one isn't exactly perfect with a much smaller matted patch to one end, but it's a lot better. The silicone hose hasn't fared any better. The discoloration is more apparent now and the feel of the hose is much less supple. I'd say it is slightly shriveled too, although there doesn't appear to be any sort of uh, inner wear. Compared with the V-Power sample, this has kept its colour and the springy feel of the tube is similar to how it was new. Something else I remember that felt different was the polypropylene. 
Although with this, like before, the ethanol sample feels the same as it did at the beginning and it's the V-Power that seems to have added properties that make it feel uh, softer and more malleable. It's a shame as I hope to see the ethanol one become more brittle uh, to demonstrate how the fuel pumps fail on certain Vauxhall 2.2 Direct models. Perhaps polyprop gaskets are supposed to soften over time with petrol and ethanol ends up preventing this from happening. The stainless steel, like before, shows signs of tarnishing, but is not enough of a difference to make a fair comparison. The brass, on the other hand, is now shinier from the ethanol blend. The V-Power retains its matte finish. Just to note, this doesn't show up well on camera as it did in person. Some early cars and bikes have brass components, so I can't say for certain if this is indicative of gradual wear, but if a smooth surface is somehow undesirable, then again, it's best to avoid using alcohol blended petrol. Now onto the rust and sludge jars. The spark plugs are showing a great result as the V-Power one has actually broken down the heat hardened carbon from the electrode. It was in a worse state than the other and now they look similar. Both fuels have cleared most of the uh, still wet oil sludge and the V-Power one has uh, tackled the worst plug of the bunch here. This is likely down to the detergents in the additive package over the presence of ethanol. I'd even go as far to say that the V-Power has made a positive difference to the rust deposits on the saw blade here while retaining the bluing that we noticed before, although there's been no noticeable change to either of the rusty brackets or bolts in both fuel samples. In conclusion then, we can see there are clear differences on what effects either fuel has on certain components. You may wish to interpret for yourselves whether or not these are down to the 6% ethanol, however the more significant changes occurred when a small amount of water was added to the samples. Then there's the sulphur levels which can only be 0.3% by law as a maximum, and V-Power barely has a trace of it, and of course there's the additive packages to consider. Please feel free to add your thoughts, criticisms or suggestions, as if this video proves popular, I'll try a few variations of this and use a petrol with a higher ethanol concentration. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and many thanks to those of you who have done, and I'll see you in the next vid.